have been posting on Facebook about, you know, trying to get into the whole contour routine. And I've been on a huge makeup kit since I turned 33 in December. And I've been purchasing quite a bit. Some of it is from online. I bought some Tarte Cosmetics from um, QVC. And I bought them from their own site. Uh, I bought some stuff from Target. I bought some stuff from Ulta. Ulta and the different drugstores, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart. And I'm just trying to figure out like what the best thing is. I mean, I know makeup is an investment anyways, and but I'm trying to figure out what looks best on me, fits with my regular routine type stuff, um, but is not gonna, you know, break the bank. Cause I could, well, I'll explain what my situation is. So I, uh, one of the things that I've been investing or that I've been checking out is um, mascara.com. And um, Kara was a blogger, yes, a blogger that I stumbled upon a while ago, um, used some of her tutorials for learning um, early on with some co basic contour stuff. And since then, she has launched her own makeup brand. I bought last week her palette. Um, there's a highlighter, contouring, illuminator, and a kind of all over usage. You can use it on your lips or your cheeks, but it's mainly blush. Um, and use it. And I really wanted to love it, but it's like, I feel like it's not giving me enough coverage. So I decided to mix it up and try to go the opposite route where I'm using my more expensive foundation and then adding on top of that a lesser expensive palette. Um, Wet n Wild contour palette has been raved about on a lot of YouTubers. I've been watching a lot of YouTube. And this one is more of a powder based as opposed to hers is more of a liquid type thing so it goes on a little bit smoother a little, just a little different um but so what i'm going to do is what I'm, I'm asking you for some input but i'm going to do half and half to kind of see really side by side like what looks best is it better to do a higher end foundation with a lower cost contouring type palette and illuminator and, and whatnot um or should i go the more drugstore route for my foundation and then stick with my mascara because i really like how it looks but it just doesn't last very long. By the time, um, I don't even know by lunch, like it looks like I have nothing on my face and I do need some coverage. So, um, I have already wiped my face clean. This was recommended from Wendy on Long Story Short. Um, this isn't the scent she recommended, but they didn't have the one, the peach and tree bark something, I don't know. This is just regular sensitive uh, towels by Burt Bees. I used that to remove my makeup already because it's not morning. And then I use the um, Belly Skincare line, their hydrating, facial hydrator. I normally add on another um, moisturizer by P uh, Pavina, Pavonia um, on top because it has SPF, that doesn't, but still not really going anywhere. I'm gonna be skipping that step. And I also already put on the Revlon Photo Ready Color Correcting Primer um, to test this out to see if, you know, that's helping the longevity of my makeup. So I will start, I'm going to do the expensive foundation, cheaper contouring on this side, and I'm going to do the cheaper foundation and the more expensive contouring on this side. So I'm using um, Tarte's Amazonian Clay Cream, and I have my cheap Target knockoff beauty blender because I don't really get the whole, you know, I don't know if I want to invest $20 in it yet, but I really do like it. I've been using it since the summer, and it's pretty cool. Um, so I, I still I still have on all my eye stuff, but from this morning. The beauty blenders, if you've never used it before, um, I really dig it. Um, you just I realized the first time is the learning curve. You have to get it wet. So in the morning when I'm brushing my teeth, I fill up a cup of water, not a full cup, but I put a cup of water on and soak it in and then while I'm finishing putting on my moisturizer and stuff I let it soak up the water squeeze it out and then finish putting on my um the primer and whatnot before I start using it. that I bought a couple of different foundations to try out too that are from the drugstore um but I'm not going to use those because I haven't actually seen if they are the right color for me so um, I'm going to be using one that I know is the right color it's L'Oreal's True Match Super Blendable Makeup um, this one also has SPF. I haven't used this in a while. Since before I got my Tarte cream, my Tarte foundation. This one looks like it has a little bit more pink to my skin tone, or adds a little bit more pink than the Tarte cream. That one is more of a tan, orangish, I guess, shade. 
I'm going to use on both spots because this thing is amazing the um, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Dark Eye Circle. Um, you go and I make underneath my eye, down a bit. I know there's another one that I think you're supposed to really more use on like the triangle shape areas, but I don't really care. Then I use the small pointed side. Okay, I have a couple travel spots, but to stay true with the experiment, I am not going to use them. What am I looking for right now? Oh, I'll just put a little bit more of my turd on it. Start with the mascara stuff. Like I mentioned, it's really liquidy. So, or, you know, it's not powder. So, it, and it has a really good size mirror attached to it. So what I'm going to do is put on where it comes with a card. It comes with a card to deep, to like, tell you where you put it, and I, even though I've already done it a couple times, it's like I still need it because I kind of forget. So um, I'm going to put on at the same time the contour and the highlight, and then later, once I blend it in, then I will do the blush and the illuminator. I do not like to put this on if John's awake in the morning in the bathroom because I feel like he's going to look and be like, what are you doing? So I have luckily so far whenever I've been using this palette, I've only been doing it while he's either still asleep or in the shower. Because I don't want to hear like, why are you getting ready for a war? Because really, I mean, is this attractive? Not so much. Okay, so once I get that on there, then I take the Beauty Blender. I'm going to be using more of the pointed tip side, so it's a little more specific of where it's going. It does blend in really well, and I think the reason why I don't like it as much when I've just been using it by itself is that it's not that great, not that thick of coverage. When I watch all those videos online, it's like you see the people's before and then you watch them afterwards, and their face is like totally different. But for me, not so much. And you're basically just helping to add a bit of definition. Like when you look on it straight on, you can kind of tell like there's a little bit of a shadow going on. So I think I've done that one. I think it looks good. I don't want to show the reflection. Then the next part, these are my two favorite ones, is the um, highlighter. It's a really, this color they pick out, shows a couple different shades, but it's very shimmery. And you put that, according to this thing, up along your top of your brow bone. Oh, wrong finger. Can you see in there how it's like, it's pretty white. Nice pearl. It just goes on so smoothly. A little bit in the middle of the nose. A little bit right here. And then if I hadn't put mask makeup on yet, I would do it on my brow My camera cut out, so I don't know if you saw it. But anyway, so I put this on here, and then I'm going to just blend it in. You can also use your finger. Maybe I'll use that. To just kind of make sure that you don't get any of the beauty blender colors on it. Because it's supposed to be a very good gloss. All right, so that's got a good glim glimmer there. What else do you put this in? It does have a bit of a color, even though it's like white, but that's the color that it will show up as. Okay, so now you can see that there's a glimmer there. Now for the ch the lip cheek one, I this was the first time I've ever used a non-powder blush, but I kind of dug it. But you put it on, and I just kept patting and patting, and less is more initially because you can always layer and keep adding but um, I usually go up my cheekbone just a smidge and because all of these are liquid it kind of gives it a little bit more of a dewy look so if you don't like dewy you probably want to stick with a powder that's matte but okay that might have been a little bit too much you can still kind of see some of the definition it's better when you're looking straight on of it all now I'm going to do the other side. So this contour palette, like I mentioned, is a powder. So you need a you know, you need to use an actual brush. I bought a set from um, Real Technique, Real Techniques from Walmart the other day. It was $15. You got this brush that I've been using for the dark contouring, a softer one for the highlighting, and then there's this little brush guy. It's kind of narrow, 
Um, but I've been using this one for, because you can do the sides of your nose with a little of the contour and then the top of your nose with the lightening one. So just something to think about. It's a good deal. I like these brushes. I have a couple of other of them from a set and they work really well. Okay. So for this one, you just do the same type of thing, but because it's a shadow, you have to, um, or not a shadow, because it's a powder, you just have to keep going a little bit at a time. I feel like this one, it shows more gradual coloring. It's also a different kind of shade. It's not as dark. Now, one thing that one of the YouTubers that I watched mentioned about this palette is that it's not uh, a shimmer powder. So when you're adding the, the highlighting part of the contouring, you have to add something else on top of it if you want the shine. I mean, it looks it does illuminate a bit, but it's not the same brightness. So now, since there's no shimmer, um, I have two other products in my swag bag from the pregnancy awareness event I went to um, earlier this month. They are by Josie Marin. It's the first time I've ever used this brand. This one is a, it's Island Pink. It is called a Cheek Gelée Coconut Watercolor. But um, it's a little dirty because I used it after I had put this on there. This is the Argon Enlightenment Illuminating Wand. What I kind of think about this is that it's a gold tone and I feel like when you're putting that on, it's a little bit, it's not like a white color that's getting added on. It's more of like a golden summery type of color. So I very much dig this. So I'm going to put this on first and then wash your finger off before you put it in the gelée pot. So you put it in the same spot as the other one. Um, this one, can you see it? Okay. So I put it there on my eye and a little bit here and this you just use your finger to blend now before you go putting your finger back in that pot make sure you wipe it off I should have baby wipes but Luke is asleep so I do not and then you just rub it in the pot this one doesn't show up as much color it's not as concentrated but it has the same effect So here are the two looks. Now, do they look very different? <laughs> no, they don't. I'm still on the fence. I have a couple more days before I can return that one, but I don't know. The whole difference is that I have to use a foundation underneath. So do I want to use a cheaper foundation or do I want to use an expensive one, which then would, whenever I run out, it's going to be like $100 to replace my entire face. You know what I mean? Anyways, so I don't know. Leave a comment below. Um, 